In the Middle Ages, in remote settlements that had little contact with the outside world and were not genetically diverse, the number of patients could be quite large. The farms and villages of Transylvania, now part of Romania, the eastern regions of Europe, became the source of the myths about Count Dracula, which later spread to the west. Porphyria was common in the small villages of Transylvania, the birthplace of Count Dracula, about a thousand years ago. It used to be common among the nobility and royal families of Europe. The disease did not bypass the royal families. For example, the historian Andrew Wilson, in his book The Victorians, mentions hereditary porphyria that raged through the British royal family and argues that it was this disease that made Queen Victoria's grandfather, King George III, mad. George III ruled for almost 60 years. Only his granddaughter, Queen Victoria, and the current reigning Elizabeth II stayed on the throne longer. George had a happy marriage with 15 children, and he is also known as the Mad King because he went crazy four times. For the first time, the king became seriously ill at the age of 22. Fever set in, hypersensitivity to light, rapid pulse, profuse sweating, swollen joints, pain in the chest and abdomen, hallucinations, and delirium appeared. Such manifestations were not similar to any known disease. The court physicians could not make a diagnosis. Most of all, doctors were embarrassed by the color of the patient's urine. At different periods, it was either scarlet, then burgundy, then crimson. The treatment consisted of warm baths, wiping and fumigating the patient with alcoholic fumes, lead preparations, and then the newfangled cinchona bark powder. The patient was lying in a dark room because the sunlight irritated the skin. The young body coped, and for the next three years, George felt almost well. But later, exacerbations regularly repeated once in a few years, and the king began to endure even the common cold heavily. The illness forced George, and with him the whole court, to lead a measured and unassuming way of life. The king ate the simplest food, almost did not drink alcohol, which made him feel worse. As for entertainment, he preferred playing the harpsichord and went to bed early. With the years passing, the attacks of the disease became more and more severe. The hardest of them happened in 1788. This time, George's mental condition aroused particular concern. He was very excited. Once he spoke for 16 hours in a row, he decided that London was flooded, began to give ridiculous orders, and dictated delusional letters to the rulers of neighboring states. His eldest son, also George, raised the issue of the regency, but suddenly the king came to his senses. Relatives attributed this to the miraculous therapy of the famous psychiatrist F. Willis, who treated with a straitjacket during an exacerbation and occupational therapy in the periods of remission. Over the next 20 years, similar attacks repeated regularly. Eventually, the king began to lose his hearing and sight. His behavior became increasingly strange, and in 1811, the eldest son, the future George IV, was appointed regent for the old king. In 1968, English doctors studied the archive of 13 generations of the royal family and concluded that George III suffered from porphyria. And some of his descendants and ancestors were also sick with it, but in much milder form. However, with Victoria's accession to the throne, the crowned family got rid of this curse. Wilson believed that it was not without adultery, as a result of which the future English queen was born. So, what disease is this? Today, scientists know exactly what makes people look like vampires. With porphyria, the reproduction of heme, the non-protein part of hemoglobin, is disrupted, which in turn leads to excessive accumulation of toxic substances, porphyrins and their precursors, which have the ability to bind metals in the body, primarily iron and magnesium. An excess of porphyrins has a toxic effect on the entire body. The connection between these two phenomena, illness and ancient beliefs about people, bloodsuckers, was first announced by Dr. Lee Illis from the UK. In 1963, he submitted a monograph on porphyria and etiology of werewolves to the Royal Society of Medicine. 
The scientists' work contained a detailed comparative analysis of the surviving historical evidence which described vampires and the symptoms of porphyria. It turned out that the clinical picture of a rare disease exactly copies the portrait of the most colorful ghoul. In advanced porphyria, the skin around the lips and gums dries out, exposing the incisors to the gums, creating a grinning effect. Besides, a particular substance, porphyrin, is deposited on the teeth themselves, which colors the smile, or rather the grin, of a person with a reddish-brown color. The face and body skin of such people becomes thinner and bursts when exposed to sunlight, becoming covered with scars and ulcers. The disease also damages the cartilage, as well as the organs of which they are composed, primarily the nose and ears. Fingers become crooked. Sunlight is the worst torture for the poor because it is under the influence of ultraviolet light that hemoglobin begins to break down. That's why, during the day, people suffering from porphyria try to not go outside, but are active only at dusk, closer to the night. Either because of the torment experienced, or because of forced seclusion, or some internal processes occurring in the body, these people also suffer from neuropsychiatric disorders and inadequate, sometimes aggressive, behavior. Of course, frightening symptoms are characteristic only for the later stages of the disease, and even in this case, not for all its types. Nevertheless, this disease, albeit not in such a pronounced form, exists to this day. The most common among all other forms, of which there are a great many, is acute intermittent porphyria. The disease is rare. Seven out of a hundred thousand people suffer from it, and downright creepy. Its attacks are accompanied by severe pains in the abdomen that cannot be overcome by any analgesics. If the attack is not stopped, it passes to other organs, such as the lungs and kidneys, leading to partial paralysis. Porphyria patients have to strictly monitor their diet. Avoiding starvation, a low-carbohydrate or low-calorie diet, is not suitable for them. Some medications can also trigger an attack, including non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medicines. With other types of porphyria, sunlight is contraindicated for the patient. It makes the skin instantly covered with blisters and cracks, and with intense exposure, it begins to peel off like a stocking. Nowadays, protective creams and other remedies come to the rescue, whereas in the old days the body had to be covered with bandages and gauze so that the person looked like a mummy. The development of porphyria is affected by the liver and bone marrow. They are responsible for the synthesis of heme. Porphyria forms just differ in the area in which the problem predominantly resides. If in the bone marrow, it is called erythropoietic, skin symptoms develop with it. If in the liver, then it is called simply hepatic, and it is this type of disease that causes pain and paralysis of the internal organs. Congenital erythropoietic porphyria is also called Gunther's disease, after the German physician Hans Gunther who discovered it in 1911. This form is one of the scariest. As a person develops it, in addition to a painful skin reaction to light, cartilage, bones of the limbs, and face begin to break down. Porphyria comes from the ancient Greek word which translates as crimson or purpureal. There are at least seven types of porphyria that differ in severity and symptoms. Hippocrates is credited with being the first to recognize porphyria. Then it was called a disease of the blood or liver. But the role of pigments was only established in 1871 by a German scientist named Ernst Hoppe Seiler. In 1889, Baron Stockfuss described the clinical syndrome precisely as porphyria, and since then, more and more forms of it have been discovered. To be continued in the next episode, stay tuned.